ծանցության եւ ծանր պահերին քեզ եմ հիշում դույմ վահանես իսկ ես քովկան հաղթանակի Good afternoon it's great to be here with you today to share these few moments together. Let's begin by proclaiming our faith in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, in this installment of Armenian Christianity today, I want to take a look at a situation that you might not be familiar with. Actually, if you're watching this show right now, in a couple hours, I'm going to invite you to come down to the diocese at St. Leon Cathedral because today at 5 o'clock, we're going to be talking about landmines in Artsakh. But of course, if you're watching this on the internet, this has already taken place, so we'll put a link on there somehow so you can find out more information. But in Armenian Christianity, what I wanted to talk about, not so much about the landmines, but about the causes of war, the outcomes of war, and hatred, and how love can conquer that. Now, as I said today, in a couple hours, we're going to be addressing this issue of landmines. Now, in Artsakh, which is, a, which is Armenian soil, over there, wars have taken place for many, many years. And during the most uh, recent of wars, landmines were left there. These landmines were meant to maim and mutilate and kill people. These landmines still remain, and today what we find is that there is this, this, this terrible, this horrifying situation where, where people, many times children, will be walking on the land, and all of a sudden a mine will blow up, and all of a sudden you have destruction, destruction of human life. Tragically, throughout the world, wherever wars have taken place, this situation exists as it does in Artsakh, in, it's sometimes known as Nagorno-Karabakh. And uh, it's important that we are aware of this and we support the efforts to clean it up. Now that sounds like something, a project that governments are involved with, that nonprofits are involved with. Absolutely, it's something that we need to support. But when I talk about it in terms of Armenian Christianity today, I want to look at some of the bigger issues that underlie why are we in this situation right now. I mean, I cannot imagine a situation where we want to destroy life, so much so that, that we are willing to booby trap, undermine the very fabric of our, of our beings, our, our families, our children in such a way. I mean, they say all is fair in love and war, and in war you can do this and that. But how wicked can people get? How wicked can people be when they leave these booby traps meant to kill and mutilate people that are unsuspecting? Now you look at some of the issues that have taken place in the news recently. Most recently we saw the beating of a man in an SUV by a bunch of motorcyclists. A week before we heard about the tragedy between the Dodgers and Giant fans who killed an individual. Now I could understand, I could understand you root for your team. You say, I like the Dodgers, I like the Giants, whoever it may be. But would you kill for that? I mean, where have we arrived as a society, as a people, that we would actually take a human life for a team? Well, you say that that's, that's awkward, but you see, taking human life, no matter where it is, even in war, is something that you and I, as Christians, need to be aware of and need to be talking about. Because here's the bottom line. If we are Christians, if we are true to the name of Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ was the first non-violent revolutionary who came and talked about love being the answer. And you see, what I'm talking about here is not just about wars. It's about the wars that take place in our lives. It's about the relationships that we have with one another. Because you say, why would, it be, why, would, why would it be okay in war, but not in, the, in terms of the relationships for your home team, your baseball team, and certainly not in the relationships that you have with one another. And certainly we hear about this here and there. We hear about the tragedies that unfold. Well, it's all the same evil. It's answering goodness with evil. 
You see, if somebody does good to you and you return it with evil, you, you return them with evil, what do you say? Well, that, that, that's basically wicked. Returning good with good, returning evil with evil, that's human. But returning evil with good is divine. That's something that comes from God. And as Christians, we're called to do that. Because you see, the situations that take place in war are just an escalation of the patterns that we have in life. For instance, if we learn as children that you repay evil with evil, well, it just continues in life. Think about it as a child, someone in, in the schoolyard. A friend comes up to you and does something wrong. What do you do? You do something wrong back to them. They hit you. You hit them back. And then if you need to, you call your brother. You can, they call their brother. Who has the bigger fists? Who has the bigger weapons? And you see, we start resolving situations thinking that the only way to resolve is by violence. Now, I want you to think about this for a moment. Think about Armenia. Armenia is a small little piece of land, small little nation, small little country that exists at the crossroads of three continents between Europe, Asia, and Africa. And throughout the centuries, different conquerors, different people have gone through that land. They've raped and pillaged that land. They've raped and pillaged the people. People have been killed, in fact, genocide. They've tried to kill off the entire people. But you know what? Interestingly enough, Armenia, you don't see them having major military forces. You don't see them having major military strategies. But Armenians have been able to well, stay alive. Not only stay alive, but to create. Create a culture. Create a people. Now I'm saying this because we need to challenge ourselves. You know, if there is something good in what Christ is telling us, we need to believe it. In other words, if we're going to say we are Christians, we have to believe his story or we have no business calling ourselves Christians. And Jesus says, come to me, all of you, and I will show you a path to righteousness. And that path is a path lined with love. Loving your neighbor, praying for those who persecute you, so we have to buy into this. And you know what? Think about it for a moment. For a group of people that have gone through so much, that have seen so many conquerors and barbarians come through their land, killing and raping their people and their country, why is it that when you walk into an Armenian church, the one thing that you hear over and over by the priest, turning to the people and blessing them, saying, Chagahutun amenestsun. Peace be unto you. Isn't that remarkable? Well, maybe what we need to do is we need to start looking for better solutions for our problems. And it begins with the solution that Christ gave us. Do you want peace? Then don't answer violence with violence. Answer it with love. Do you want true and lasting peace in your relationships, in your life? And certainly we all want it for the world. Well, it needs to begin someplace. It needs to begin with us taking command and charge of our lives and saying, you know what? You can't fight fire with fire. If you fight fire with fire, you get more fire. You fight fire with water. You can't fight violence with more violence. You need to fight it with love with understanding. And so for a moment, I'm just challenging you. I'm just challenging you. Think about the Armenian experience. That Armenians have existed on that piece of land, no military might, no military strategies, and have not only existed and survived, but have created their tomorrows. Maybe there is something that they have tapped into. And I'm just asking you, open yourself up to that possibility. Because when you open up yourself to that possibility, you start saying, well, maybe Armenians had something there. Maybe there is a truth there. And you know where that truth is? Right in your Armenian church. Because the one place that has preached this message for the last 2,000 years has been the Armenian church. With all the priests, with all the bishops, with all the saints, 
praying the prayers. Think about Nersa Shnur Ali. Praying the prayers of, well, the, the, the 24 hours of the day. Think of Nersa Shnur Ali when he prays the Arava Duso. The name of love is Jesus, he says. Let it come into my heart and crush away. Crush that hardness of heart. What is that? Does he say, let me get a, a hammer? Does he say, let me get a bomb? Let me get some landmines to crush away the hardness of my heart? No. He says, bring in Christ. Let Christ, let the love of Christ, let love who is Christ, and Christ is love. Let that crush away my heart of stone. And you see, when we start appealing to love, we see that the answers are right in front of us. They've always been with us. We just need to challenge ourselves to think in these terms. We fight violence not with more violence, but with love. I'm looking for a world where, there can, where we can exist in harmony, where we can exist peacefully, without weapons, without landmines. And you say you're a dreamer, but you know what? You have to dream it. You have to dream it, and then to make it come true, to make any dream come true, what do you have to do? You have to wake up. Wake up from your dreams and say, I am an ambassador of Christ. In my life, I'm putting love first and foremost. Armenian Christianity today is the same as it was centuries ago. It's about placing love in the middle of your life. I ask for your prayers for this world which is in need of love. A world that has the hardness of heart and waiting for it to be crushed. As our father says, as Nersa Shnorali says, Ser Anun Hisus. Let the, the name of love is Jesus. Let it come and crush the hardness of my heart. I look forward to being with you again next week when we'll explore Armenian Christianity further. In the meantime, remember to give praise and glory to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Always. Amen.